Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me today. What I'd like to do today is a little journal made from your 12 by 12 scrapbook papers. A lot of us have come from the scrapbook world originally before we delved into journaling, which means that a lot of us have still got 12 by 12 papers floating around in our stash. This little journal can be done with matching papers, with the same papers, whatever. You're only going to need two and a half sheets of 12 by 12. It's a pretty little journal, just as a journal on its own or as a little tuck one in your folios or your journals. It is sewn and has lots of little tuck spots. So I'll move my ribbon and what we've got is this. So all of these are little tags and journaling posies. So this is my prototype and I'm going to show you how to do it. It is a quick and easy little journal. You can do more pages if you wish, but that's what we're looking at. And over to the back. Now, when I do mine, I like to make my front covers just slightly longer than my innards so that they cover all of these. So we'll go through that as well. Quick and easy little journal to make. We'll pop him aside. Now I've got my 12 by 12 sheets, which I've already cut into six inches in width. So they're still the 12 inches wide. So what they would have been, hang on, hang on. All right, so there's your initial sheet. Join him back up and just slice straight down at the six inch mark so that each sheet measures six inches by 12 inches. Okay, so when I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six, I will only need five of them. You can use the other one again, as I said before, but I've got five of them here that I'm going to use. Once you've got your six inch sheet, you'll need, uh, you'll need a bone scorer, or you can use a scoreboard. It's up to you. I tend to use a scoreboard if I can undo it. Ah, oh, right, here we go. Can undo it. So, Sitting your six by 12 inch sheet down, score at the six inch mark. Measure across three and a quarter inches and score down again, which leaves you with two and three quarters at the end. Go back the other way from your six inches, go three and a quarter inches. So one, two, three and a quarter. Do that with four of your sheets, five of your sheets, four of your sheets. Your front cover, as I said, I like mine to be a little bit longer and I've gone an eighth of an inch over again. So this one is going to be my front cover. So I've already scored him to save some time, but I'll show you what I mean. So the six inch line and over to the three and a quarter, but go an eighth of an inch over. So one, two, three eighths of an inch and score down. Same going back, three eighths of an inch, three and three eighths of an inch, sorry, and score down. Once you've scored all your sheets, so your initial ones, six inches and then three and a quarter, you won't need your scoring board anymore. We'll pop him away. Once they're scored, it's a matter of just working out. So I want that as my inside, that is my outside cover. So I've got my six inch mark and I will need another bone scorer, so bear with me. <laughs> just to give them a good crease. I'll get this one back out again. All right, go down, fold him over and down and fold him over and down. So that there is your front cover. Do that on all the sheets, working out where you 
which ones you want to be seen. So like with this sheet, which goes like so, really makes no difference on the outside, but on the inside, I have a clock up in this top section. So I want to be able to see him, so I'm going to fold him that way so that he is seen on the outside and in and join those two up, which will tuck in here. So this one, I want to see this section. So folding down, folding down, and then join your center bits together. Same with their last sheet, which is this one. Now, it would have been that way by the look of it. So I'm going to have one going one way, one going the other way. They're just a plain a green on the other side, but again with that clock. So what I'll do is I'll show that clock, score down, score down and fold in. Then this one, I want to see the other green because we've gone the light green on that one. You can do them all the same if you wish. It's just me trying to make things a little bit more difficult. But as I said before, it's a great way to go through your 12 by 12. So you've got your four inside pieces. Look, you can have five if you like. Um, we might as well. Let's have a look. That one is at three and three quarters, so I have already scored him the right way. Let's make that one this way. And we'll put that extra sheet in. So for this one, I'm going to actually use three full sheets. Right, so there's my pieces now all folded. And that one was my front cover. Work out the way that you want your pieces to sit in. So we're gonna go that way. That way, we might do a darker green, which is that one. We will do that way, which is the different one to that. I'll do that dark green, and then I'll put that light one as my center one. That's my little book. Simple as that, really. Now, with each of these, before I sew it. Now, if you want, you can just run over to the sewing machine and sew straight down there, remembering that you've now got that sort of thickness. So if your sewing machine's not going to do it, you'll need to hand sew it, which is what I'm going to do in a moment. But to start with, I want to make little pockets out of these. So I want to cut each of these. Okay? So all I'm going to do is for me, I find it's easiest if I go from the corner and measure down two inches or close to two inches. So I'll just get my scoreboard, my cutting board out. And we'll sit here. Now this one, my cutting board is a centimetre one. So two inches is round about five centimetres. So I'm going to take that from there, I've got my fold on this line, that one to that one, and there's one. Don't chuck these away. We're gonna actually use these as well. So again, with this one, sit him here. So it's about to this way, which is the 16 centimeter mark on this for where I've got him sitting at the moment. Again, don't chuck those away, sit them to the side. Here's my centre one, which now has that. Same with this one. Oh, look, I'm on exactly the same one. Back down to 16. 
do try and have them straight. That one's not straight at all. Okay. Down. And the same with this side. So we're chopping down here. And straight through. This is a little project. Look, these make great gifts, these ones as well. So it's just a little project you can do on a rainy day. And I'm going to sit those in the direction that I want them to be once I've cut them all up. Now I'm gonna lose a lot of my clock with this one. Going down to 15. Straight off. Same with that one. So they don't have to be exact measurements. Um, I tend to work I tend to work in centimetres when I'm doing cards, inches when I'm doing scrapbooking or journals, but then sometimes like this, I will cross between the two. So it's around about. I'll just move my sleeves up because I'm awfully hot today. So I'll just set you back on there. You can do this with your trimmer. You can do it with scissors, whatever is easiest for you. I tend to work with my knife all the time and my poor old knife i love this knife um it was a fiskers one but as you can see it is dying and i keep trying to I've got, i have the little piece look there's a little piece that fell out and i keep trying to glue it back in but over time it falls out again and i just can't find these knives anywhere anymore so um where am i going 15. Um, so I'm just putting up with this knife because I just, it sits in my hands so beautifully and I love it. I have arthritis quite a bit in my hands, so it just, it feels nice in my hands. It's all, look, I reckon I've had it for 10, 15 years. I'd say that other one was a little bit out of whack, but we'll, um, that one. And that one. I lose a little bit of my words. See, that other one was way over there. We'll have to look at him when we go through. Because he may not have worked. I did come through. I've done three loads of washing today. I'm so proud of myself. Now, this is my front cover. My front cover, I'm not putting these ones in. My front cover, what I want to make when I find him, is a full pocket so with this one all I'm going to do is put my half circle or my circle punch in it to make a half circle now it's up to you you can eyeball it I know that this guy is about six inches about <laughs> so if I put a mark on the three inch line then I can put my circle punch in round about centered and take that out do the same with the other side. Yeah, my measurements weren't too great, but that's fine. I try to work in measurements when I'm doing tutorials. Um, but the rest of the time, I just eyeball everything. And quite often, they're not. So that's this bit. So I'm just going to run a little bit of ink around that. You know me by now. I like to have my ink going around it just defines everything and we'll just quickly whiz around that just to give it a nice edge i also like to do my folds so when i'm doing something like this i will do the folds just to define those as well where was i round to there So I will fold that back again and just give a little bit on the fold just to give it that slightly grubby look. Now, as I said, I've done, I've just pulled out three sheets of scrapbooking paper. These have all been from the one range. So I know that they match. It's the easiest way to get matching 
especially if your mind's not really with it. So I've just very lightly inked around. Um, they're a great way just to get a quick match. Now with this one, because we've got this, I'm going in here. And I'm then going on the outside. And once again, I still have not renewed my walnut stain and I'm just inking with the Distress Ink in the walnut stain, but it so needs a new one. It's not funny. So we'll go down here. Unfortunately, I can't ink prior. Well, I probably could have with these. I will ink down the edge. And because I see this little bit, I'm just going to ink down there. Right, so that's that one. He tucks in there. This one, same thing, around the outside. Oh, I need some new ink. So you, you get a little bit of that clock with this one. It's just a matter of looking at your papers. If you've got directional papers, make sure you're going the right way for those. If you haven't, Bob's your uncle and you can just go wherever you want. And that shows a little bit. Oh, it shows all of that in the top, doesn't it? On the bottom, it's just about an inch either side of that centre fold. This one we want to go down here. Down there. And around. So I'll just keep inking these. Twiddle your thumbs. Talk amongst yourselves. Tuck you in there. I hope you're having a good weekend. It is still the weekend here. Um, it's Sunday. I'm filming late this weekend. Normally I do these on... A, well, I try and do them on Saturday. Um, Saturday disappeared. I had a crop day where we met with a group of friends and just do our own paper craft product, things that we're working on. We haven't met for about a year, over a year, um, because of COVID. So it was lovely to catch up with everybody yesterday. Had a ball, so, but that was the full day yesterday and it rained and it was horrible weather, but really nobody cared because it was just nice to meet up again. So consequently, I never got this filmed yesterday, but I've got to admit, I did take the rest of my prototype with me to finish off while I was there and then before I started working on other things. So we'll have girls there. Some are doing card making, some are doing scrapbooking. Majority of them are doing scrapbooking. I'm sitting there usually with my journals or making tags or tabs or just my ephemera for my journals. Um, but really, I go to talk. <laughs> That's what it, it's just the social event of it and meeting up with like-minded people. So if I can come away with one tag done, I've had a really good day and that's for six hours work. It's just, yeah, you're just there for the social event. It was, we moved into Victoria because I'm in Australia. We moved to Victoria about five years ago and moving over, I knew nobody. Finding a group of women like this just is the best thing because all of a sudden you'll find women that are into paper craft like yourself doing whatever. Paper craft is paper craft. Doesn't matter whether you're scrapbooking, card making, journal making, um, all of those sorts of things. It's just, you know, we all still ooh and ah over different papers and different embellishments, tools, let's face it, there's so many tools on the market these days that we all just love. All the different tools and the containers to cart all our tools and our papers and all of that in. It's just, it was a great way to meet people when we moved from a different state. And it's, it's just a great way to make friends. And now, five years later, I'm still, I'm firmly entrenched there now, I think. Um, but it was so nice to meet up again.
and just catch up with everybody. It was only a small group because our restrictions are still down on how many we're allowed to have. Uh, that's all linked, but it was still nice to, to meet up with them. Okay, so now here's my mess. So putting them all back in again. Uh, and like that, like that, like that, and like that. Right, so we're going, yes, see I have taken that one way over. I don't know which one that one is, but that's all right. And um, obviously my trimmer was not great because so it's like they're not all just six inches, but you get the gist. So what I want to do is match up my crease because I want to stitch this in now. So I'm going to, I tend to use bulldog clips to hold everything in place. Now that's whether I'm doing um, sewing in signatures or just holding things in place while I'm working on pages. Push those right in as well. And technically, technically, what you want it to do then is to close without um, bending too much. So let's see if that will close. That looks pretty good. There's no great whoops in it. This is my journal. So I need to stitch down in these, and that is, and I'm gonna hold it like that while I do it. So what we'll need is I have, I call it a prick mat. I really don't know what they're called, but it's a very dense mat that I can put my all into. So I want to go round about in the center. I'm just going to make a pencil mark. So I know this guy is round about six inches. So on my crease line, I want to make a mark on the three inch part. And I want to go about, for this one, about three quarters of an inch down from the top and about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. And so I've just got three little pencil marks there that are going to be my stitching marks. So with my awl, if you've got one of those big awls, they're even better because you don't have to put as much pressure in. I will hold him up a little bit and I'll go straight through all my creases. Okay, and I'll give him just a little bit of a stir just to make it a bit easier to get through with my needle. So one, two, that one's just a little bit too much of a stir. And down onto that mark. And I've got my three. So we'll sew this one now. What I want to do to sew this, do I want to go white? Yeah, I might go the white. I usually have, this is just crochet cotton. And I tend to use these all the time for when I'm stitching and I have a tanny color and I have a white color. I have been known to dye this before, um, tea diet, coffee diet, whatever else is floating around. But I think the white will work because the majority of that will be seen on there and on the inside there. I'm going to rub out my pencil marks just in case I can still see them a little bit. I should be right, but we'll just double check. We want about three times the length roundabout. You can see my measurements are a little bit over each time. So three times the length of your journal. So whatever size, you can do this slightly smaller. It doesn't have to be six inches. You could do it four inches. You could do it five you could do one 12 by 12 sheet each time and do it eight or nine inches high. It's up to you. So this is my thread now. I will need a needle. So I've got a little needle, a little darning needle, but it has a, a really big head on it, really wide. So it makes it easier for me and my eyes to see where I'm going. All right. So starting in the center, straight through. Leave yourself a little bit of a tail. You can always adjust it later on, 
but leave yourself a tail. Back through, down to the bottom and straight through. Pull him, don't pull him too tight at this stage because you want to be able to readjust it. Straight up to the top and through, which is the other reason why my bulldog clips the arms are down. I have been known to leave the arms out and then have my thread all over the show. And then back into the centre. Try not to go through your thread because you want it to be able to move freely. So I've got him coming out there. And that's it. That's your basic three stitch. So I've got my centre ones. If I hold that up and hold it steady. This is coming all the way up. So I've started in the centre from the inside, gone through, come back up through the bottom, all the way up to the top, down, and then back up the centre. So I have a thread on one side of this centre line and on the other side of this centre line. They're not even at all. So let's just even that up a little bit. And this is why I don't tend to pull it too tight to start with because then I can play around with it and even them up a little bit more. Oh, can you hear those dogs over the back fence? My word. And that one and the small one. I'm getting there. They don't have to be right dead smack center wise. All right, from that, we're just gonna tie a knot. So pull him, but again, not too tight. So go one way with your knot and then go the other way with your knot. That'll make a really good knot that's not going to fail. It's up to you what you do with these tails. Now, sometimes I will leave my tails and I'll leave them nice and long like that, put dangles on the end so that what I've got at the end and I'll tuck them up here. When I undo my journal, I can then use them as different book page marks as I go. Or other times, like with my first one of these, I've then just tied a bow in the centre. Just keeps them out of the way. You can always undo your bow again later on if you decide you want... Make that a little bit smaller. If you decide you then want to make some little dangles, you can but it just keeps them tucked out of the way. I want that a little bit smaller. So what I'm doing is just putting my finger as a pressure point on the knot while I'm tying that bow. So for this one, I'm just going to keep it as a bow. So I will trim off my tails like that and like that. Okay, so technically a journal is almost complete. What we're gonna do now is take off our bulldog clips. And the last one. And what we've got is a journal with lots of pages. So this one's thicker because I've got extra pages in it. So we've used the whole of our pages. Now, with these guys, I want to make these ones just a pocket. But what I want to do with mine is have a ribbon closing. Now you can always just stick your ribbon on. You can always just tie your ribbon round. What I like to do is actually put a slit in here and attach them to this. So this is what we're going to do. I'll just So again, we want to go round about the centre. So that three inch mark is here. That's my centre. My ribbon for this one, I'm, I've just pulled out a seam binding. So I don't know how long I've got it. Probably, um, let's have a look. That's 35. Oh, look at that. Half a metre, which is 50 centimetres, which is what in inches? 
I don't know. Hang on a moment. Uh, 14. Around about 20 inches. Bit over, bit under, whatever. So, if I sit this here, I can see how wide my ribbon is. Again, with my knife, which is there. I'm just going to sit my ruler on that crease. I can see that my ribbon, I could make a mark either side, but I'm just going to sit it there. And I want to cut from about there to about there. Straight down that crease. Make sure that that's cut. And then what I should have, fingers crossed. See how I've got a little slit now in here? If I thread my ribbon through there, and it should fit like so. And then I can just, and I'll use double-sided tape for this. So I just want two little pieces of double-sided tape. Uh, this is wonky double-sided tape, this one. It keeps um, coming away from its backing. Right, so just two little pieces. Just to really hold it. And I'll sit it there. And I'm going to sit another piece right beside it. Take off my backing. Try not with that nail because I've lost that nail, so I'm useless. Right. Making sure that's on there nice and straight. It should line up with that centre bit there. And then I'm just going to fold it over and push it down. So now I have this one in here. It's the easiest way to do a hidden ribbon binding. So turning him over and doing exactly the same thing on this side. So let's have a look. We'll cut about the same length. Round about. Right, about there. Ah, wrong scissors. They don't really cut wonderfully well. I'll sit you over there. So once again, exactly the same format. We want a three inch mark dead on that crease, which is about there. And we're going to sit our ruler against that crease. Just sit our ribbon there so that we can see whereabouts we're going to go. Hope that the ribbon stays there. I want to go from about seven centimetres to eight and a half, round about. Try and go straight. And down. So two cuts just for good measure. Let's have a look. Moment of truth. There it is. Straight through. Straight through, maybe not. Might not have done this one quite as large. There it is. There it is. So same thing with our double-sided tape. All fingers. One. And two. So our tape's only about the length of the width of our ribbon. If that makes sense instead of just saying oh just a little bit of tape it might be you've got smaller ribbons so you just need smaller pieces of tape doing the same with this one make sure it's nice and straight fold it over and then you've got that one as well so a little bit of glue and this is the only glue i use well no it's not i lied sorry we'll do this and then i'll show you where i put the rest of the glue so a little bit of bead of glue straight down our sides. Here. And down there. Fold that over. Got my dirty old cloth. Push that, which will just in case any glue comes out. 
I also then, while I'm doing something like that, while I'm working on the other side, I tend to use paper clips and I'll just sit it in to make sure that that glue has fully held while it's drying because I'm playing with the rest of the book. So turning it over, doing the same on the other side, two little beads of glue. See, I'm concentrating. You know I'm concentrating. Oh, look, that went straight under there. I just want to get that bit out before it sticks to the rest. A little bit down here. See, a lot can be said for not having a messy desk. I can't say that because I've always got a messy desk. This one will then fold over, use my cloth down and back again with my paper clips, two on each end, one to hold it up that side, one to hold right in the centre. Okay, that's that. Now, these ones... All I do is glue the bottom. I tend to leave the rest of that as such because it allows me to put something thicker in. So I'm just gonna go, see there's lots more glue. So don't listen to what I said before. There's lots more glue. <laughs> Nothing wrong with me. Awesome cops. Right. Down. And once again, I will put my paper clip right on the end. And this one, truly it doesn't take that long. And what you're going to end up with is a finished journal in one afternoon. And how often can you say that? Yes, you still need to um, decorate, but we're gonna have a lot of this done by the time that that's, by the time that we're finished. So for me, I can make a journal and have my signatures and sew all those in, but then I haven't done my cover and then I haven't done something else and it's taken me ages to work out how many signatures I want and to have all my right papers dyed and, and pick out my papers. This way, <laughs> I had three papers to pick out. And that's where I find I uh, struggle, I suppose, would be a word, but I just fluff around. It is, you know, it's choosing those elements. It's choosing what papers I want. And I will watch other people's YouTube videos and I'll see them do a journal and they grab this and grab that and grab this and grab that and it's just bang, 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 bang. Wouldn't you just love to have that much confidence? I fluff around and I go, oh, maybe that one wouldn't work. Maybe I should use that one. Oh, but then if I use that one, maybe that one's not going to Oh, but then I don't want to use that one because I might use that on something else. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like that every time. I take more time deciding about what I'm going to use than what it takes me to actually use it. So with this, I had three sheets to choose. And that was it. Just three sheets. And that was all I allowed myself to use. So from those three sheets, I'm going to get I'm going to get rid of all the excess glue off that. So that's one side done. So now we've got this side. Um, so from those three sheets, I'm going to have all my pockets done, my pages done, and I've taken so much fluffing is the only word for it because I fiddle around and carry on and I just can't quite make a decision. Some days, not a problem. But most days, the decision-making process in my head these days is gone. I don't know where it's gone. It just left me one day. And so 
if I can come up with a way to take most of that process out and all that decision making out, I will get so much more achieved. And as I said before, this is one of those journals that you could make in any size. If you've got all that scrap, that 12 by 12 paper floating around, use it. And I have so much of it floating around. And it's a great way to use it without, especially if I've bought something and it's in, you know, the ranges that they'll put out. Each, each company will put out a new paper and they'll put anywhere between five and eight papers in that range. But they all match. So it takes that decision out. So if you pick things from that range, you know whichever ones you use, they're all going to match with each other. So that's one decision-making process taken out. And I don't know about you guys, but I need that some days. I just, yeah, I so need that some days to be able to still do what I love, do what I want. I need to somehow, some days, make it just a little bit easier. So while we've been to oh, sorry, while I've been rambling and waffling on, I've now got all these pockets stuck down. So you can see how I'm just putting in my paper clips as I go. And it just holds it together. But while I've been doing that, these ones have well and truly stuck so I can pull those ones back out. All right, so you know how earlier we pull, we cut these pieces? I'm just gonna get rid of my green mat because I'm just making myself uneven with that. Sit you back there. And we had all these. And that's what I've made for my tuck spots. I've utilized those. So I've got all these wonderful ones, whichever size. So that one's been taken off that. To flick him over, he's going to go onto these pages. Do you see what I mean? So I can sit there and play around that one. Mm, we'll have a play with him. And I can just sit them whichever way I want them to sit in here. So you can see what I've done with this one. So these are the pieces that have been cut off and then I've just stuck them on to make further little tabs. So if I get these ones, we've got numerous and we look at the colours that we've got here now. Let's have a look. Oh, that way, that way. Don't want that green. Let's have a look at that one. So what I tend to do is just sit them in, work my way through. I've got all these paper clips already sitting here. And I can play around with what I've got. And a green one. Look at that. How easy is that? And all I'm doing is using the ones that I've already got cut. This one I didn't have any on. That's my center page. These time, this time now, we're going this way. So, see, and now I'm fluffing around again, aren't I? <laughs> I might go you down there. And I might go pink. And I go green. Just watch what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with that music note right beside that music note. Hmm. What have I got? Hmm. 
and that one. How's that? Look at that. So now I'm just going to stick each one of those on and it's done. <laughs> it's not that hard. So each of these I will just ink around. You can add as much or as little other embellishments as you like. I'm going to take out that paper clip, pop him away, glue there and there, find my glue. See, there was lots more glue. So down. Hold him up. Make sure there's no glue. And again, I will paper clip my corners just while I'm working on the rest. Ink that one. Okay. Glue that one. So really it's just, all it is, is working out your measurements to start with. Sitting that one in. There. There. And there, which will just hold them while I'm working on them. This one. Because otherwise I tend to forget. And I'll go to lift something up before it's dried. I'll move something and inadvertently move the placement of it and then wonder why things don't fit properly later on. So if I paper clip them, they're drying, they're safe, and I don't have to worry about how I'm moving anything else. And by the time I've got to the end of the book, my front ones are already nicely dried. Try to get just Little bits, I might clean the tip of that. It's getting awfully gunky. Down. Once again, paper clip him. Whoops. Oh, the sun just went behind a cloud. It's just got awfully dark here. It's been a beautiful day, considering... I haven't been inking, have I? Um... Considering that it rained so much yesterday and I think the temperature dropped like six degrees in half an hour, it um, today's been quite nice. As I said, I've done three loads of washing to make up for it because it's the weekend and got all the work clothes and everything else. But yeah, the sun's just dipped behind a cloud and... Um, I probably should have turned on the main light in here as well because all I have on are my lights over my desk and I'm hoping that you guys have enough light to actually see this. Right. This one. And we're nearly done. And it's up to you how you want to tags. I like journal spots. Most of my tags are single-sided. 99% of the time when I do tags, they're single-sided so that the other side, it's got glue coming out of it, the other side I can use as journal spots. So when I was doing tags for this one, for my prototype one, I used and i'll show you what i did shortly just to finish off we're not going to make them today to add into this you can get the idea of what i've done i'll show you and i'll run you through how exactly i did them and they were literally off cuts again because the whole of this i didn't want to then cut into anything else i didn't want to have to think so i've just used um i had some 
white card stock, very light. It was actually a um, small notebook, but it was in card stock weight, which is just really weird. So I just cut that down to make tags that would fit these. So I've got fatter tags on this side, skinnier tags on this side. And um, I then covered them in book page because any way I can use book page, I will use book page because I have so much of it and I just love doing it. And I had one, I've got a book that, uh, which way am I going? What was that one, wasn't it? Um, I had a book that I cut into a while back that I gutted because I wanted the cover as a journal cover. And this gutted book had then been sitting there. I hadn't really taken that much notice of it until about last week. And I went to do a tutorial and with my book paper flowers, book page flowers. You pulled out this book that I'd gutted, as you do, to find that the paper in it is really, really thin, really thin. So that's the paper that I then used to cover my white cardstock so that I didn't bulk up the tags again and left them fairly thin because this is scrapbook paper and it was getting fairly thick anyway. And if you want to use it, you know, tucked into the front of a an actual journal or whether you're giving it a gift or whatever else but if you want it tucked into an actual journal and I wanted the um, I wanted it so that it could become whatever I liked whenever I need it so if I use something too thick I've then you know limited myself to what I can actually use it for so I use this beautiful thin thin book page and I've then covered that again with serviettes. And so it makes it still a tag. The back of it is plain so I can journal on it. But And it's given me dimension and elements with the book pages and with the serviettes and all the rest. But it's become nice and thin so that it doesn't bulk out my little book again. So it just gives me options for then what I want and what I can do with it. Where am I going? That one. Okay. Now some of these you could have at the top for top tuck spots. Top tuck spots. Say that fast. It's up to you. All right. In essence, we're done. It's a matter of playing around with the front. Get rid of the scraps. These ones will now be dry. My glue has dried on those. They're all nicely done. Now I could have stamped on those. See, look, no stamping. Very impressed with myself. I did do on the prototype, of course, because I stamped on my muslin to put a script stamp on there. And that's one of the book paper flower book paper book page flowers that I did on last week's tutorial right that one's still a little bit wet but we've got half of it done there's our little journal done so let's say we want a tag for this um, this is this plain white cardstock so he's in this width Okay, and all I did for this, and we'll very quickly do one up. I wanted him just a little bit shorter. We'll put him on first. This is this book. Um, but it's really, really thin. So, it's fairly old too. It's got little old spots through it like most of us do these days. Most of us have little old spots on us, don't we? Right, so just a piece of scrap so that I can glue. Use my glue stick. Going 
going over I use the Bostic blue glue because then I can see where it is that I've glued on my paper and where I haven't so that's the only reason I use it I find that it's good glue anyway I came across it ages ago and it works for me and I've just stuck with it so I'm going to go a little bit lower than that and up to there because I'm going to trim a little bit off anyway right now I tend to also use an old store card which I use for my ends to make my tags but I also use it just to make sure that there's no bubbles and then I can I tend to run down the sides of my tag or my card stock because at the moment it is just card stock that way it's held it down properly while I then cut it off so just cut that up there and down there get rid of all the glue on my scissors and that one all right so now i've got my tag base i'm being very good and i'm throwing these pieces away all right so there's my tag base i'm just gonna put the lid on that glue again Sit you back over there. Right, so with the serviette, I've got my container of serviettes. And if I look for, where's my little pretty blue ones? I don't know why I'm fiddling around on this because, um, how about that? He'll fit. That's a piece that's left over. All right, and I wanted to trim a little bit off that, didn't I, for length? So let's have a look. Yeah, I'd like him a little bit smaller. So, and there's my big scissors. I just cut it down to about that wording. And back to my glue stick. Where did I just glue that one? Nope, glue stick. You can see why I get into such a mess. All right, straight back over my book page. And I can still see where my blue glue is. Move that one out of the way. That's the bottom, because that's where my wording is. So the bottom of my, and I want to make sure I get all of my little kookaburra in down, pushing him up, just give him a quick wipe, and once again, then with my old store card, just very lightly wipe it down. Takes all the air bubbles out, and then I will always just go down and around. Like so. Now I can trim that one. Turn him back over and trim that one. And I'll put some tag shapes in it. And then ink around it. And that's all I've done for my tags. But it means that I've got a blank tag on the other side for journaling. And I've ended up with a pretty little tag that's got no thickness to it. So it doesn't add too much to the thickness of my little journal. So I want to pop in tag shape on that one. So I'm just putting my card against here again. Done. Turn him over. And so I have two, two different sizes for my tags on this. They, they tend to be the main sizes that I use. Right, pop those scissors away. Pop that one away. So back again with my vintage photo. Right, 
right. And there's so many pretty serviettes out there these days. They're just lovely. Now I will always just ink around the other side as well. If I wanted to, I could pop lines on my journal spots and quite often I do. But for this one, we're just gonna worry about that. So he will now just tuck straight in there. And that's all I've done with this one. And it's all been done with serviettes. So this one's just a full um, index card for my first one. And he just slotted in like that. So if I pull them all out and start popping them in here. So some I've given tag shapes too. It's just another one. They're not necessarily going to match in with the colours from this album. But you'll get the gist of where everything goes. And I'm just pulling them out of the other one. Oh, this was just, I had some scrapbook paper sitting on my desk left over um, out of a sheet. And so I've just cut tag shapes out of these ones. And because they were fairly clear on the other side. My little blue wrens. Oh, once again, see, there's my kookaburra again. I think he's so cute. <laughs> and kookaburra again. So... And I'm not going to have as many this time because I've done more pages. So that one I've just stamped on. I've just used the plain white in the serviette, you know, the backing pieces, and actually just stamped on it. So and that one. That one. We'll find what we've got over here. This one. This one I've just gone in rounds. But these were all serviettes. Just a mixture of whatever serviettes that I had floating around that were kind of in pastel or florals or birds. Any of those sorts of things. And that one will go there. So I've run out. That one there. Because I've got extra pages on this one. All right. So I'll make another tag for that one. And then my last one, of course, I had another journal tag. And that just went in there. Then from that, that one will go that way. That one will go that way. I can decorate then the front to whether it's going in a specific journal so I might want it done in a specific way for a particular journal. It might be end up being a floral journal. It might end up being a wildlife journal. It might just be a journal journal. Or it might just be as a gift. I've done way too long with those, with that ribbon. But you get the idea. I hope you've enjoyed today's. I thoroughly enjoyed doing this little one. So you can see the difference once they're full. But then this one does have another sheet in it. They're just a very quick and easy little one. And I know this has taken probably just over an hour now. Um, but we've gone all the way through it. It's all got its pockets and its tucks and all the rest in there. Ready to do your tags. You'll probably find you've got tags in your stash that'll go in it as well. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you re-look at your scrapbook paper that's sitting way at the back in your stash somewhere. Get it out, use it. It's doing no good just sitting there. If you have liked this one, please hit like. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to me. I'll enjoy seeing you next time. For those of you that have subscribed, thank you so much for doing this journey with me. And until next time, make lots. Thanks, guys. Bye.